So starting with the physical characteristics of Mars, uh, and as usual, starting with rotation and orbit. So Mars has a fairly similar rotation period to that of Earth, about 24.6 hours. So that's fairly familiar. And it has not quite a two Earth year orbit. Its axial tilt is also fairly similar to Earth's right now. So Earth's is 23 degrees, Mars axial tilt is 25 degrees. And so as you might imagine, there are seasonal effects on Mars related to its polar ice caps. Um, and this axial tilt actually isn't the same all the time. Remember that our axis uh, processes like a, like a spinning top, it kind of spins around. But Mars's axial tilt, not only does it process, but it actually gets more tilted or less tilted over time. Um, personally, I'm not sure why that's the case, but there's um, evidence of that occurring in the past. And when that happens, then Mars gets, uh, you know, more climate effects that are similar to ice ages here on Earth. There isn't a strong magnetic field. You might expect, you know, Earth has a magnetic field and it has a similar rotation period. So maybe Mars would have a magnetic field. Remember Venus uh, rotates too slowly for that dynamo effect to get started. Uh, but actually Mars doesn't right now have a strong magnetic field. Some of its surface rocks have some uh, magnetization indicating that it used to have a strong magnetic field. Um, and at this point, it's actually unclear if the core is liquid or solid. And there's a NASA mission called the InSight program that's currently uh, has a, uh, you know, a rover on the surface. I don't think it's a rover actually, I think it's in place. And it's doing measurements, seismic measurements of the interior to try to figure out more about this uh, inner core of Mars. So uh, bits of Mars have made their way to Earth in the form of meteorites. This is weird to me, but uh, impacts from other, uh, you know, other asteroid impacts, things like that can blast off bits of rocks into space. And so we receive meteorites both from the moon and from Mars. And the meteorites from Mars are particularly interesting. We were able to say for sure that they came from Mars because little bubbles of gas get trapped out as the explosion forces them through the atmosphere, the thin atmosphere of Mars. And when we look at the atmospheric composition of the gas trapped in that bubbles, we see that it matches what, what we see on Mars. So um, in these meteorites, we've found traces of water and also organic molecules. And so this leads some to believe that the conditions on Mars might be such that life was either once supported in the past, at least microbial life, or could even potentially today um, have the possibility of existing under the surface. And what we see here is that these meteorites that we've gotten from Mars are about 1.3 billion years old. So this is fairly young, right, compared to our uh, four and a half billion year old solar system. And so this is an indication that these are, you know, recent Martian samples that contain these organic molecules. I mean, geologically recent. Mars has these two moons, Phobos and Deimos. Uh, we've talked about them before. This image puts two images of the moons together. Uh, their size is to scale, but their distance is not. These are rather small and their density is low compared to Mars. And uh, the NASA article where I got this image from says that it's likely that they're captured asteroids. Uh, but there's some debate in the astronomical community um, that one of these um, Phobos could be uh, the result of a giant collision like the one we had that produced our moon. So it's not for sure, but um, many astronomers think it's likely that these are captured asteroids.